Are you interested in using Game Maker's drag and drop to make a platformer game like this? Do you want to know how to add animated characters and enemies all within drag and drop? Well keep watching and I'll show you how you can do it. G'day, I'm Peter and I run Game Maker courses on Udemy. They are aimed at beginners but they are also in GML, Game Maker's custom language. I also help users on the YoYo forums and quite a lot of people ask for assistance on how to do things in drag and drop. Well today I'll be starting a series on how you can use drag and drop to create a platformer. We'll learn how to build some efficient code to produce a platformer that initially does this, but in a few more steps I'll show you how it can then look like this. Now this has pixel perfect collisions, deceleration for the player, as well as various sprites for each character. So let's get started. Now after you've installed either the full version or the trial version of GameMaker, you'll be presented with this start page. So we want to click on new and we want to go to drag and drop. So you're now looking for a file name or what you're going to call it. I'm just going to call mine tutorial and press save and the project will then load. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up to game options and I'm going to set the game's frames per second to 60. Now yours might already be 60 and that's fine. So the frames per second means how many times GameMaker will run the code that you're entering per second. So our code is going to run at 60 times a second. So press OK. So before we start, I wanted to give you a quick overview of the workspace. You can see that there are these tabs that can be dragged around and they can be docked or undocked. They can be put onto the side and they can be put onto the bottom and they can be moved around to customize how GameMaker looks. You can also press F12 and that will hide them for the moment. And you can also press this little tab on the side and that will show them. So for now, what I want to do is right click on sprites and say create sprite. Now a sprite is the graphics that you will see on the screen. So when you have a player character, the sprite is just the graphics that is used to display uh, that object. So let's create a sprite for now. And I'm going to call it S for sprite underscore player. Now you can't have spaces in the names, so I do like to use an underscore for a space. And I'm going to change the size, and you can do that here. And I'm going to set mine to 32 by 32. And then I'm going to click on edit image. And now we need to create our player sprite. So if I hold down control and shift and use a wheel mouse, I can zoom in and out. You can also hold down the middle mouse and you can uh, scroll around or pan around. So I'm just going to choose a blue color. And I'm going to choose the paint fill tool. And I'm going to fill it in blue. And you can see that this section on the left is for the left mouse. This is for the right mouse. If I choose a paintbrush tool, then I can use my right mouse and I can draw an eye for a player. And we can draw a mouth. Now you can also fill in if you like and fill in uh, either left or right mouse. If you make a mistake or change a color, you can just right over it. So there's my player. I'm doing a face so that we know the, which way the player is facing when we actually implement it in the game. Now I'm going to press Control and Shift and Wheel Mouse and zoom on in. Now this crosshair is the origin of the sprite. So I want the center to be the middle center. That'll put it right there. So now that we can close that and we can create an object to represent this sprite. So right click on objects, go to create object, I'm going to call mine O underscore player. And I'm going to assign the sprite that we created. Now each object can hold its own variables. And I'm going to create a couple of variables for this one. Under variable definitions, I'm going to click the little three dots. I'm going to go to add and I'm going to create a variable called walk underscore SPD standing for speed and I'm going to set the value to 3. So our player is going to have a walk speed of 3 and I'm going to add another one and I'm going to call this HSP and that stands for horizontal speed and I'm going to set that to 0 initially. So I can close that down. So we can tell our object what to do by creating events. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to create a step event. Now a step event runs every step of the game. And if you remember, we're running our game at 60 frames per second, so 60 steps per second. 
So the code in here will run 60 times a second. Now we can put code the run in the step event by combining the code blocks on the right. So we drag and drop what we want the object to do. So the first thing I want to do is have the object listen for any input from the player. Is the player pressing the right key or are they pressing the left key? So if we go down, we can look at mouse and keyboard and one called if key down. I'm going to drag that over. Now because it's an if, we're asking a question. If the key is down, we want something to happen. And that's something to happen we want to place over here. If the key is not down, then we place the code below it and it will keep doing whatever the next step is. So let's change the key to right. And if the key is down, let's go up here and let's choose the assign variable block. And I'm going to drag it and put it on the side. We don't want it down here. We want it here because that means that the key is down. It will run what's in this code block. And what I want to do if the key is down is to change our HSP variable, our horizontal speed variable. And I want to set it to walk speed. So whenever right key is pressed, HSP will always equal walk speed. And that will enable the character to move to the right. Now I also want to add one for key left. Now remember this side here is if the statement is true. This is if it's not. So we want to go and get the key down again. So I want to drag this and I want to put it not over here, not down here, but under the if key down. It means after it finishes with this, it will then process the next one. So we want to say if key left. And once again, we can drag across the assign variable and we want to put it on the right here. Because that's saying if the key is down, then we want to run what we have in this box. Once again, we want to set our HSP. But this time we don't want to set it just to walk speed. Because a positive value for HSP indicates we're moving to the right. A negative value will indicate we're moving to the left. So we need to change this to negative walk speed. Now before we can test this out, we need to add a player to the game. And GameMaker represents your game window as a room. So rooms is what we use to drag our objects onto to show the game. So let's drag the player and let's put them in the room. And let's go up to the run button here. I can also press F5 as a shortcut. And we'll see if we can move our player. So if I press left or right, I'm not getting any movement. And the reason is that even though we've set that up, we're not doing anything with this HSP variable. The game is not being told to then use that to move the X value of the player. So let's go and assign one more variable. And we'll put it under here. And what we want to do is assign that HSP value to whatever our X position is. So our X is going to be assigned our HSP. Now if I leave it like that, the X value will be given the value of HSP every time. We don't want that. We want it to be added onto the value of X. And if we click the relative button, that will add this value to this every time. So once again, let's run that and we'll see if we can get the player moving. So now when I press left and right, we do move. You'll notice one thing though, we don't actually stop. And that's because our HSP value is always set. It never goes back to zero. We want it to slow down over time though. So let's go back to our variable definitions. Let's add a new one and I'm going to call this drag. I'm going to set it to 0 0.9. Now we'll use drag to slow down the player. So let's drag another assigned variable and right before we're setting it to our X, let's change the HSP and this time what we'll do is we'll say HSP times drag and that way we're getting 90% of the HSP per step. So if we run that now we should see that our player will slow down. So one press means you move and we get a little bit of a slowdown at the end so that works quite well. Now the next problem is the player is not facing the right direction when they're moving. So in order for the player to face the right direction, I'm going to create another variable definition. I'm going to create a variable called facing. I'm going to set it to 1. Now facing will indicate which way the player is facing. 1 is facing to the right. Minus 1 is facing to the left. And we can use this if variable check to ask questions. Let's drag it in down the bottom. 
And how it works is we say, if a variable is equal to or not equal to a value, then we can do something. And the, if it is true appears on this side, if it is false, it'll go down here. So if that variable of HSP is firstly not equal to zero, we want to make sure when HSP value is not zero, then we'll drag another check over and we'll say if the variable is actually greater than zero, that means we're moving to the right. So let's assign our facing variable the value of one. Now, if that's not true, if our HSP is not equal to zero, it's not greater than zero, then that means it's actually less than zero. So we can drag an else over and we'll put it down the bottom here. So our else is saying, if this is not true, then we'll do this. And what we want to do is drag it to the little section on the right and we want to assign our facing to be minus one. So now our facing variable indicates which way our player is facing. So now we want to use that variable to change which way the sprite faces. So let's go and add a draw event. Now a draw event happens every step of the game and it's what is used to draw the player. If we don't do anything here in the draw event, the player is drawn automatically. But as soon as you create a draw event and do something, the player is no longer drawn and you have to do it manually yourself. So if we go down here, we can do it manually and we're looking for our draw sprite transformed. So let's drag that over because we want to do this because we want to use our facing variable for the image X scale, which is the orientation of the sprite, which way it's facing. So what I want to draw is the sprite of the current player and the sprite of the current player has a variable name. It's called sprite underscore index. So I'm going to use that. Now the frame is what frame we are currently showing. Now I don't want to get too complicated and too technical with the first lecture. So I'm going to use our image index, which is the frame that is being shown for the player. Now our X and Y, I'm going to tick relative because I don't want to change them to zero and zero. I want to add zero and zero to them. So I just want to use the existing X and Y. I can tick this and that will stay the same. You can also untick this and just write X and Y. And with that untick, the same, it'll mean the same thing. But I'm going to keep it consistent and just make it easy to do that because in the future, it's easy to tick those and type anything else in. Now this is the one we are here for. The scale X and the scale Y tell, show which way the sprite is scaling. Now I want to put the variable facing into the scale X section. I'm going to leave Y as 1 and everything else I'm going to leave the same. So let's test that now. So now when we move, our sprite flips around the correct way because our facing variable is used to change that. Now that's all for our intro tutorial on building a platformer using drag and drop. In the next one, I'll show you how to do collisions. In the meantime, if you're interested in making games, I have two courses over at Udemy. One is a beginner course and the other one is more a beginner intermediate course. And I'll show you how to make a tile based platformer using GameMaker. I'm putting a coupon code for 90% off my course down in the description. So go over there and have a look. There's an intro video that you might be interested in. But for now, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial where we do the collisions. Thanks for joining me. See you then.